Hey guys, today we have that cheap Alice style custom mechanical keyboard, but not actually Alice layout, but Arisu style. And this is from YMDK in China. And this thing without switches is only 135 USD and not much more if you want it built, which it may sound like a, a good chunk of money and it is, but in custom X, it, it's pretty low. No proper packaging though comes in that box, which is fine, whatever. Uh, just as long as it comes undamaged. We even get a few goodies. I mean, this USB-C cable is pretty sweet with its denim sleeving. Uh, we also get a keycap puller, key switch puller, all the case hardware, and screw and stabs, which normally cost a bit, so not bad for value. And here it is, very simple construction with a thin plastic piece sandwiched between the two alloy pieces. I grabbed the grey version, which I'll be painting anyway, but there are a few colours available. And yeah, the the Anno isn't the greatest, which is, it's kind of to be expected, uh, a bit streaky and that classic sparkle and just a bunch of machining defects around, especially on the inside edges, but nothing too crazy. Uh, just this scratch here, which is actually on show. Yeah, that, that's pretty bad. Taking it apart, there's a bunch of Phillips head screws on the bottom, and that super thin 1mm acrylic piece comes loose. I'm actually not sure if that was supposed to be broken uh, up top, but whatever, I'm not going to use it anyway because I don't like that aesthetic, but it does allow for that side glow. Here's the bottom aluminium piece, it basically just closes off the case at the bottom, and no angle because the feet just screw in. And finally, the top alloy piece, again, just one piece with the integrated plate. That makes it nice and simple and more importantly, cheap. Uh, normally, of course, we have separate plates and the mounting of said plates determines a lot of how a keyboard sound and feel. But with this, we know it's going to be stiff as. Here's the piece of it. Uh, looks like we get two spare diodes too. It supports five pin MX style switches and through hole LEDs if you want that. It isn't hot swap, so we will have to solder. Feels like feels like it's been a while to be honest. And on the bottom we do have underglow RGB LEDs. And finally a USB-C port, which is sweet. I didn't record the stabilizer installation, but I lived them up nicely. But again, these screw and stabs come with a kit, which for the price uh, is an awesome inclusion. And while the PCB supports a normal backspace, the plate does not. To keep it on the cheaper end, I also grabbed this Matcha XDA key set from the same store. Uh, it has the compatibility and it was only 33 bucks. And this is exactly what we're gonna theme the board of. To be honest, I, I couldn't be stuffed to head out to the store and actually color match this. And in the theme of keeping it cheap, I'm just using a normal spray paint can that I already had, no airbrushing. And we'll do some experimenting. Um, at the time, I was like, yeah, full cheap, stuff priming, stuff sanding or stripping, just send it. And that's what I did. Just went straight on with the paint. To be absolutely clear, this is not what I normally do. I just got a bit carried away here. Definitely rough it up, uh, use etch primer for metals and then spray with a colour paint because I did end up having issues later on with paint flaking off around the edges while sanding, so don't, don't follow this. Green is such a nice colour on keyboards, honestly. Even just the plain state it's in now looks sweet as with the matcha keycaps. But of course we gotta push further because why not? Before that, just a heap of sanding. Always so much sanding when it comes to painting. And it looks like I was watching Smiling Down on Twitch at the time, building his mode 80. It's kind of funny um, when you think about it. So often when building keyboards, I'm watching someone else build one. Alrighty, here's my uh, dodgy illustrator work, please do not judge. 
and yeah, just going with the whole matcha theme. I was pretty lazy, so I just grabbed some stock leaf illustrations off the interwebs, uh, and they're not they're not even matcha leaves. It's not for everyone, but it's really fun adding stuff to the board to spice it up aesthetically, give it a bit more personalization, something a bit different, you know. Gotta give a shout out to my mate Justin for giving me the idea of having matcha in katakana while I was streaming Illustrator on Discord. Clear paper makes it all easy though, you don't need to be super precise with cutting and I, I did make cutouts for the screw holes so that's all good. Also, Joseph Yu because Jinte, and Tim Killis because he was in voice chat while I was doing this. Uh, check them both out on Twitch though, champions. Uh, Arthot was in there too, uh, I can't remember who else was. And then it's just a matter of clear coating and slowly working them in so they don't look like stickers. Gotta love wet sanding. Looking pretty good so far. Unfortunately because of just lazy masking, I'm using that word too much. I got some overspray on the inside, but then again it's just the inside and the black eye, I just sharpied on. Mad scuff. So of course the thing with painting is that you're adding thickness. With this build, there's no real fitting parts where tolerances are important, so it's not much of an issue. The only thing it did affect were the stab cutouts being tight. As for the switches, I'm chucking in some Gazoo Boba U4Ts. Uh, as the board has this integrated plate, it's gonna be hard, it's gonna be harsh, so I'm gonna embrace it. These are tactile switches with a pronounced bump and a long pole, similar to say, holy pandas, and I just know this is going to be crazy loud. I also chucked in a few Gatoron Capiellas for a linear reference. And here it is, the YMDK Wings custom mechanical keyboard, all painted up matcha themed. Always so good finishing up a job and seeing everything come together. You can visualize things and draw things up, but you don't know for sure how it'll look until it's done. Again, I didn't color match the greens or anything, but I think it works absolutely fine. It's, it's such a pleasant and calming green. Not as vibrant as a green that we would normally associate with matcha, but it looks so good with a matte clear coat sanded nicely smooth. I knew the bottom would look pretty good, but I'm pleasantly surprised uh, with the top. It was actually pretty tough trying to add stuff to the top surface. Even though there's so much empty space, the irregular shapes made things look kinda out of place. 
Um, the katakana over here is is easy though, like the TJ Alice and stuff. But the leaves over here was a bit of a gamble, but I think you can tell what it is. And going black with the decals definitely gave it more life. I previously had the opacity a bit down and I wasn't a fan. And then adding black to the edge of the bottom alu piece again just gave it more pop. But then turning it over, very nice, pretty happy. Uh, green on green looks sweet, very calming, um, even if they're not, <laughs> they're not marcher leaves. We still have the march in writing, so we're good. Cutting was a bit dodged towards the bottom, missed the lines that I drew, and I didn't go edge to edge just to avoid any potential lifting issues, even though it was all clear coated. The completely flat bottom did make this easy though, uh, as we saw before it was just one big print. Back to the top, and let's talk about that layout. Many of you will know the TGI Alice, which has spawned a whole lot of these Ergo style boards, and that would be like a sixth of percent. This is based off the Arasu layout, which is like a 65% version with the arrow keys, similar to like the Maha, but this doesn't have the second B on the right hand side. And that's the main thing when it comes to splitting a keyboard. The angling is all cool, allows us to have a more natural arm and wrist position, but it's that awkward crossover that some will take time to get used to because of our individual typing techniques. In my case, I do press B with my right index, and I press Y with my left index. Uh, that's just me, so obviously when it comes to typing, that's something to adapt to. Um, also, this has a split backspace, and I've always been a full-size backspace person. It also doesn't have the Windows key, which I often use. However, this is programmable via QMK, so you can play around with the layout and layers and all that. Other than that, it's all pretty standard, very comfortable and easy to use, and after just a bit more time with it, you can adapt pretty easily because it's just it's just the split 65% angled downwards. Alrighty, let's finally give this thing a listen. What an absolute machine, it's pretty much exactly what I expected it to sound like. As said before, integrated plate, and it's split, so it's more like two small plates, so as stiff as a plate will ever be. No flex, but still 1.5mm alu, so it's sharp, it's clacky, and just crazy loud with these U4Ts. I remember hearing these switches on Kiwi Kang's keyboard stream, and love how they sounded. They're quite reminiscent of Holy Panda's strong pronounced bump, long pole with the earlier bottom mount, and just wonderfully clacky on here. I did film and lube the bottom housing only with Triversus 3203, just to clean up the sound a little bit. And they are named Thoki though, but in this board, yeah, that's just not happening. As for linears, I have Gateron Cap Yellows, but it is just the number o, which always sounds different but not bad. Uh, the board definitely won't align to many people's preferences, that's just obvious. And I know the switches make a lot of noise, but I didn't hear any ping. It's just the typical 
thin, sharp and hollow sound that these kind of boards have. I will build, let's say, a more standard board with the U4Ts though in the future because they feel awesome. And that's the YMDK Wings Custom Mechanical Keyboard. It's... it's cheap. It's cheap for a custom mech and it shows with its lack in quality, um, its mounting method, but it's kind of enticing because of the layout. It gives you the opportunity to try something like this, which at the moment is somewhat limited with expensive mechs. And then there's a bunch of acrylic layered boards, but, but for an alley board and even all those accessories it came with, this is value. But it probably won't amaze you with its typing experience, although this one does for me. So it might be something you won't even use, however if you're on a super tight budget, it's an option. Also a very easy board to paint if you wanted to. I'll chuck all the links in the description and all the keyboard streamers I mentioned too. Uh, bless.